My name is Brendan McGowan. I'm the Education Outreach Officer at Galway City Museum and I'm co-curator of this Revolution in Galway exhibition. This exhibition opened in Easter 2016 and it tells the story of the struggle for Irish independence from a Galway perspective, I suppose. It tells the story of the Easter Rising in 1916, the War of Independence of 1919 to 21 and the Civil War that followed. So from our perspective, what's important is often the focus on the 1916 Rising is on what happened in Dublin and during the War of Independence, it's what happened in Munster. But to get a more complete picture of the national story, it's important that everywhere tells our local stories and that's what we do here. We tell the bigger story of the national struggle and then we tell the local tales here in Galway as well. I suppose one of the key figures in the period in Galway is Liam Mellows. Um, Liam Mellows led the Rising in Galway in 1916. He was elected MP for Galway in 1918 but didn't take his seat as an MP. He became a Sinn Féin TD and he was re-elected in 1921. So much of our story here focuses on Liam Mellows as one of the key figures in Galway. Liam Mellows opposed the treaty in 1921 he was arrested in the forecourts in the summer of 1922 and spent a significant period of time in Mount Dye Jail. Then in December of that year, some Republicans carried out an assassination attempt on two TDs and Liam Mellows was executed as a reprisal by the Irish Free State. We have a number of um, poignant objects on display here with fascinating and often tragic backstories. One of the interesting objects we have is a piper's cap belonging to Eamon Kant. Eamon Kant was born in County Galway. He was one of the signatories of the uh, Proclamation of the Irish Republic and he was executed for his part in the 1916 Rising. But before all that, he was a founder member of Common na Pibri. So he was a talented musician, was involved in the foundation of this piper's club and in 1908 he went to Rome and played the Illan Pipes for the Pope in Rome wearing this cap that we have on display here and I suppose the point in that was it was Eamon Kant's sister who made the piper's cap it was made like a medieval piper's costume and the importance of that was that he played the Eamon pipes to show Irish national identity on a world stage it was the first time the pipes had been heard since the flight of the earls in the early 17th century in Rome one of the most fascinating objects I think is on display, or one of my, my, my favourite pieces on display, is a petrol cap. It's a piece you could walk by without paying any heed to it. And if you look very carefully inside that petrol cap, there's a picture of a teenage girl with her hair cut really short. In September 1920, um, Crown forces in Galway targeted the house of the Brodericks on Prospect Hill. And they were a fairly prominent nationalist family in the town here. They went to burn down the house and they were unsuccessful because the neighbours helped them save it. But this petrol cap was saved saved by the family from one of the canisters that tried to burn down their house. Not long after that incident, Peg was taken from the house by members of the Crown Forces and her hair was cut short um, as a punishment. And Peg went and got her hair shaved to the bone so that it would grow back uh, straight. And she got a photograph taken. And inside that petrol cap is a photograph of a teenage Peg Broderick with her short hair and a very defiant look. We have a collection of material then belonging to Father Michael Griffin. Father Griffin was a curate in Galway. He had Republican sympathies and he was an Irish language enthusiast and he was abducted from his home in November 1920 by members of the Crown Forces and was found in a shallow grave outside the city a week later. This is particularly important because the killer priest was seen as another thing altogether. It made the New York Times and was a big, big story at the time and we have several items belonging to Father Griffin including a locket of his hair saved by a friend of his and other priests here in Galway. One of the interesting things over the last few years has been the Decade of Centenaries because it's unearthed stories and photographs and objects that maybe we wouldn't have otherwise heard about that have remained quiet for the last century. And through the support of central government, we've been able to put some of these on display and create some beautiful publications and some additions to our exhibition here.